a pair of AL clubs. We'll see the Chicago White Sox as they play against the Cleveland Indians. Right here on 2K Sports. A Central Division matchup. The White Sox taking on the Cleveland Indians from Cleveland. He is known as a game changer. This is Grady Sizemore. Greg Love, outstanding bat. I'm Gary Thorne. Steve Phillips, Sean Crook with me. Major League Baseball, 2K Sports. It'll be Justin Masterson, the starting pitcher. Lineup for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of... And so Johnny Damon leads it off. Last outing for the White Sox proved to be a win. That made it five in a row, and they'd like to try and make it six. Well, and this is a team that's playing great baseball right now. No one playing better than them in the major leagues. Fouled off that first pitch, and it's 0-1. Good way to look at how a club's doing is look at that last 10 right column down. when you read the paper in the morning. You'll see 8-2 and two for these guys. Well, and you'll take that any time of the season, whether it be in the beginning, the middle, or the wow. end. Let's just see if they can keep this run going. This one's grounded hard up the middle. And so Damon retired. Chance to check out the Indians around the diamond on their defense. Infield, outfield factors in this one, Steve. Well, as Drupal Cabrera has great versatility up the middle. It doesn't matter where you play him. He has great range and instincts and the ability to be able to throw from any position on the field. And it's Alexei Ramirez now, one away. His lifetime average, 261 off Cleveland. Ramirez will foul that one away. Masterson with the delivery. Ramirez fouls it off again. A swing and a miss. Alexei Ramirez is retired. Oh, Gary, that's an outstanding slider. That great late action with two strikes. Not much you can do with that one. Tough one to hit. And Paul Canerco to bat. Looking to build offensively off his last game where he had a couple of RBIs and trying to carry that into this one as well. That's it foul by Canerco. Well, Masterson goes right at him. That's strike two now. Well, anytime you recognize a slider, you got to be very patient with it. You can't be over anxious. You got to stay back. And then when you see it good enough, let it fly. And through it goes. The hit streak is on. And with two down, they've got a man on board. And a runner on, Carlos Quinton will hit. Masterson with the delivery. Line drive fouled off towards first. The pitch fouled off. Strike three. Quentin on a swing and a miss. He's out. See a good inning here from Justin Masterson. The handiwork already on display. Strikes out two to start this ball game. Leading First look at the, the Cleveland Bats coming right Cleveland up. Indian center fielder. Going to take a look now at the starting pitcher for the White Sox. Steve, as he gets into this Cleveland lineup, what's he looking at? As a hitter, when you face John Danks, you have to be patient. You know he's a guy that wants to expand the zone, but he'll give up a walk, and he'll give up a hope. Well hit towards the middle. Well, that's a good start. First batter, first hit. Line up for the Indians. We'll take a look, courtesy of Pepsi. Now, John, anyone in particular we should keep an eye on? Well, Johnny Peralta is a great hitter. He has power. He can provide some pop for this team. Let's see if he can do that today to get his team a win. Lays off that one at the letters, 0-1. Now, the Indians, they took a loss yesterday. They were hoping to take the series after splitting games one and two. They ended up grabbing one game only against the Reds. Oh, Sizemore, here we go. And he is safe, just beating that throw. Swings, lines this one back up the middle. And he's in there, no play. Now a quick look for this game at the White Sox and how they are positioned in the field. 
So Steve, the thoughts on a fielder here? Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. It's going to be Laporta now. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. Here's the pitch. 0-1 is a fastball inside. That'll even the count at 1. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. That'll be a base hit at an RBI. He is safe at third base ahead of that play. Well, he saw a pitch that he really liked, and he did not miss it. A really nice job with nobody out keeping this inning going and picking up that RBI. Great, great piece of hitting. Shin Su Chu looks to knock in a run. This offense, he makes contact, line drive. And it falls in there, Indians to pick up a run. Now batting. Well, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. I mean, now it's four straight hits. He's got to start wondering what's going on. Maybe he's tipping his pitches or they're just figuring him out. No one out yet. Runners at first and second. Danks gets him to swing and miss for a strike. The pitch hit in the air to left center. And another, wow, that hitting coach is smiling. They tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind him to count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and took advantage of it. Look out as that one runs in and hits it. Well, with the base is loaded, you have to throw strikes. You have to make them earn it. Now he hits a batter and gives him a run. No one out. Sacks full. Typically, when you throw one in that far off the plate, you want to go to the outside corner. Let's see if he does it. Well, that's an intentional pitch right there. He wants to keep the hitter from leaning out over the plate. And that looks like an RBI and a single. And the throw. And Peralta scoring as well. Base hit not. And a big one. Brings in a couple of runs. Well, this is remarkable. He cannot get anybody out. I mean, you talk about six consecutive hits. I mean, they're going right through the lineup one after another. Everybody's swinging the bat well. And it's Austin Kearns. Blake. Now, definitely not an overstatement to say this offense may not be stopped. Ground ball up the middle. And he scoops it up. There's one. And two. They got both of them that time. And the run comes in. Execution on that 6-4-3. You have to have body control around the bag. Great acrobatic turn by the second baseman. Outstanding job. Two outs, space is empty. Here's the delivery. Drill towards third. And there's Tian for the third out. Wow, they deal some serious damage. First inning, really starting out with a bang. The Indians lead it six to nothing. A chilly night that seems to be getting a little colder as we play on, and happy to bring you our broadcast on 2K Sports. And Beckham's in the box. I got to be feeling pretty good about himself right now. Driving in runs, hit a big shot last game out there, and got to have some confidence coming into today. And he gets this one by him on one. Well, right there, you can just tell that the hitter was absolutely fooled on that pitch. Nothing you can do. You try to reach out and just put it in play, but he swung through it. Liner towards the hole. And out number one as he steps on the base. One out. And Alex Rios at the plate. And the 2009 season was a big disappointment for Alex Rios, starting out with the Toronto Blue Jays and then continuing on when he got traded to the Chicago White Sox at the trade deadline. Things just didn't get better in either place. This one comes off the wall. Rios towards third base. Now 
with one away. They've got a runner at third after that triple. Or uh, Rios, just a 247 batting average last year. Nobody expected that. No, not at all. And this is a guy who's a former all-star. You looked at him in Toronto and you thought we can build a team around him in Toronto. It just didn't work out. It's going to be Przinski. Well, the Cleveland Indians proved to be one of the division rivals that the Chicago White Sox could at least handle in 2009. Swings and misses the slider 0 and 1. Interesting that the uh, White Sox lost the series wow. against Cleveland at home but they went 6 and 3 in Cleveland. Yeah, that is kind of amazing but that just shows you just how pitiful that the Cleveland Indians were in 2009. You know they lose all these guys to free agents. Jake Westbrook got hurt. He missed most of the season. A guy who you thought was going to be their number two starter Fausto Carmona. He swung on that is hit fielded by Cabrera. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. And so out of the inning, only eight pitchers thrown. That's pretty efficient. The White Sox still hoping to put something up. And Brady signs more up. Right there in the top five in home runs. First pitch, here it comes. Plays off again, 2-0. Oh. Swung on, hit in the air to right center. And it's going to be Quentin. And he gets over and grabs it with the left. Here's a look at what's coming up for the White Sox. Final game with Cleveland this Wednesday. And they'll be taking on the Rays, led by MVP, maybe, Devin Longoria. A team they didn't have too much trouble with in their previous series. That kicks off on Thursday night. And after that, they'll be home against the Rangers. They'll have to deal with Josh Hamilton in that power-hitting lineup. The team they rolled over last time out. And Cabrera settles in. Uh, 2009, the White Sox find themselves in the middle of the AL Central Division. A big part of that was their failures on the road in 2009. And this at bat already 0-1. First pitch was a strike. I'm talking about the White Sox on the road. The adage of baseball, of course, 500 on the road. Well, they weren't able to do that, 36 and 45. Yeah, and a lot of it had to do with the fact that their offense needs to be a little more consistent. The this one's grounded hard up the middle. Out number two. Take a look at the teams leading the way with fewest walks allowed, courtesy of State Farm. The White Sox, number one. The Royals in second, third the Mariners, the Twins fourth, and for the Blue Jays, they are in fifth. It really speaks to the philosophy of the organization when you have the fewest walks given up. They understand they need to throw strikes and let the opposition put the ball in play and trust the defense. Pena with a strike two. Good pitch. Here's the pitch. A swing and a foul off to the right side. Ball. Trying to get him to chase a slider, but it's one and two. When you throw a breaking ball like this, you want to start it on the corner and break it off the zone, trying to get the hitter to chase. The hitter didn't take the bait here. Fastball, ball, that's well off the plate, two and two. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. And he'll step on first to retire the side. And they're held in check here in this half inning. Cleveland six, the White Sox number. End of the order is going to try. Here's a look at Ozzie. Ozzie Gian. This has been a test year today for him and his team. It's going to be Knicks now. Only a 178 career average against Cleveland. Swings at that fastball and misses. 0-1. I see the bit overmatch last game out. He's striking out three times in that one, so he's hoping to make a little more contact here. Got him. One away. That's a lot of movement there for pitching 87 miles per hour. And it's Johnny Damon now. When I take a look at Johnny Damon's approach at the plate, he's a slasher in there. He's a guy that goes up looking to swing the bat to put the ball in play, but has enough patience to take the walk if a pitcher gives it to him. Damon will foul that one away. Certainly Johnny Damon in 09 liked the new Yankee Stadium and that 
wonderful wind tunnel to right center. Well, Johnny Damon you know, has, has a swing that's tailor-made for short porch in right field, and he took full advantage with the 24 homers. But the fact that he played in Boston and he's successful in New York tells you that this guy can play anywhere. Well, he's a veteran hitter and a guy, really, that I think rubs off on the people around him in the lineup. His approach, his focus, his professionalism really does lead an offense. Down on strikes there. A nice piece of pitching work. He's got some real giddy up on the fastball today. It's got that good late action in the zone. That's his fifth strikeout on the fastball. Towards center field. This one to Sizemore. And that's going to do it in this half inning. It's the kind of inning the defense likes. Three up, three down. And leading it off, Shinsu Chu. Designated hitter. Number 17, Shinsu Chu. And he starts Chu out. It's 0 and 1 as he swings and misses with that fastball. Pena with a strike two. Good pitch. He deals. Still 0 and 2. Oh, tough one to lay off right there, that fastball. One and two. Hit hard to second. Beckham. That's one away. And as May winds down, let's see how the standings are in the Central Division, courtesy of State Farm. It's the White Sox in first. In second place, it's the Royals. Twins in the third spot. In the fourth spot, it's the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody, sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that confidence level. And it's Johnny Peralta in the box now. Last year, 265 against the White Sox. Here's the pitch. Well hit towards the middle. Beckham. Retiring Peralta. Second base. And it'll be Valbuena standing in the hit. Try it again. Hit by a pitch as last time. And that's in for a strike. He's just popping that glove with that four seam fastball, pounding the strike zone. Up the middle. Nobody left on base. No runs or hits here in this half inning. And it'll be the White Sox. And Paul Canerco to lead it off. He's the league leader in ribbies. Number 14, Paul Canerco. And he starts Canerco out. Swing, hot shot, Masterson. One away. But a quick recovery that time gets the out. You have to have quick reflexes on the mound. You're the closest to the hitter of anybody else on the field. The ball got back on him. He was able to make the play. Moves his feet to be able to get the momentum going to first base for the throw. Nice job. 0 and 1. Masterson kicks and delivers. Strike two. Now with no balls, two strikes. Quinton needs to protect that strike zone. I was an offensive machine last time out at hitting clinic with four base hits in his last game. Rung him up. Strike three. Count that one as K. And Beckham's in the box. He's got a 292 average when uh, going up against the Indians. Oh, and Masterson gets him swinging for the first strike. Well, this one here was no doubt about it. The late break on that slider. I mean, what a devastating pitch, and the hitter just couldn't catch up. And the side's retired. Kearns catches it. He'll head in. So Justin Masterson. And Bradley's in the box. He had a two-run single in his last appearance. Well, he's already driven in a couple runs in this one. And Brantley's in the box. A loss yesterday for Cleveland. And with that loss, they end up going one for three in the series against the Reds. Well, coming into this game, you know this team needs a win desperately. He swings on that 0-0 delivery, misses the fastball. Strike one. 
Over their last 10 games, they've won only three. Clearly not good enough, especially for a team looking to the postseason. No, it's not. And they need that one big player to step up and help deliver a win for them, whether it be a hitter, a pitcher, a reliever, anyone to get this team a win. Good slider that time. Ruled the ball. One and two. Now, I just did not pick up the ball very well out of the pitcher's hand. Last time out, struck out every at bat. Misses there. We're even at two. Here's the pitch. And it goes foul. The 2 2 pitch. And that's another foul ball. You know he was hoping right there when he threw that fastball, as long as this at bat has been, that he would get that big strikeout. Now he has to regroup and go back to work. Typically, when you throw one in that far off the plate, you want to go to the outside corner. Let's see if he does it. And he lays off one inside, and he's worked it full. Fastball in there, no, called third back. strike, what one out. Look, Gary, if when I was playing, if I got fastballs right down the middle, when I had two strikes, I might have made it to the big leagues. That's exactly right. <laughs> and it's Austin Kearns at the plate. Two for four lifetime against Tony Pena. And Kearns settles in, ready to go for his pitch. Missed ball one. Oftentimes a pitch like this, in on the plate, back in the hitter up, is a setup pitch for the next one to go away. Let's see if he throws it there. And that's off the plate, away, ball two. Swing and a rocket toward short. And that gets down. Kearns on with a base hit. And be sure to tune in next Sunday. It'll be Carlos Quentin and the Chicago White Sox as they take the trip to Tampa Bay to face the Rays. Things will get going at 1.30 Eastern. Okay, that's going to be a great matchup, and everybody's going to want to tune into that one. I'm looking forward to it. And here's the first one. That's foul back behind the plate. Hit on the ground towards second. It's scooped up. The second, there's one. And two, a double play. So no runs on one hit and nobody left on. We're through four here at Progressive Field. And if you're just joining our 2K Sports Major League Baseball broadcast with John Crook and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. And Alex Cerrillos to lead off. One of the best batting averages in the league. Masterson with the delivery. Now let's take a peek at the league leaders in batting average courtesy of State Farm. Now we see some tremendous hitters on this list. Guys who understand how to make good contact at the plate. They get the good part of the bat on the ball on a consistent basis. That's going to bring up A.J. Pierzynski. Last outing for the White Sox proved to be a win. That made it a sweep in the series, going three for three against the Marlins. Well, this ball club got off to such a great start in April, and look at what it's done for them. You're and A.J. Przezinski strikes out, unable to make contact on that pitch. Here, he's not messing around, going right at him on the 0-2 count. He didn't waste anything. He just went right for the juggler. And here's Martian. Lifetime only a 125 hitter off Justin Masterson. And it's fouled off. Here it comes. There's a swing and a smash. This one to Sizemore. Now it's two away. And here's a look at what's coming up for the Indians. The Chicago series ending on Wednesday. Following that, they'll have a road series to play the Yankees and their premier star, Derek Jeter. That's Friday through Monday. Following that, they'll be on the road to play the Tigers and uh, one of the game's best hitters, Miguel Cabrera. Great series there. So they'll be out and about over a good bit of that upcoming schedule. First pitch on the way. And Masterson gets him swinging for the first strike. Well, Gary, this guy has an outstanding slider. Such a tough pitch to hit. It almost needs a turn signal when he gets to the plate. And it's in there. That hitting streak continues. The opportunity for offense is right now. They tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back 
for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and took advantage of it. Strike, Strike two. two. No balls, two strikes. Veteran Damon, though, will cut it down and try to just poke it out there. Now, You're teammates got to be feeling pretty good about him right now coming to the plate, knowing he's coming off of his last game when he hit one out of the ballpark, taking advantage of the pitcher being in trouble. No runs and a couple of hits and two he's left on. The we still got the, the shutout here at Progressive Field. We've got the top of the order coming up. And we're going to see Sizemore here, right there in the top five in home runs. Here's the first pitch. It's fouled away. The pitch and another oh. foul ball. And that swung on and hit Rios and it gets down. That's hit number two making good contact. So as Drogo Cabrera will come up. Well, that pitch down and away is the toughest in the game to hit. Perfect pitch from the pitcher. Great piece of hitting. And keep that in mind. Next time around, we'll see whether or not he changes up and how he throws to this guy. The runner on first, no outs. Here's the pitch. Hit in the air to center field. And that should be a single. And as May winds down, let's see how the standings are in the Central Division, courtesy of State Farm. It's the White Sox in first. In second place, it's the Royals. Twins in the third spot. In the fourth spot, it's the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. The Chicago White Sox on fire right now, back from the dead. They couldn't do anything right before, and now they're doing everything right. This one's wow. grounded foul, wide of first. Swing and a miss on the slider. One out. Well, that's a lot of movement there for pitch at 87 miles per hour. Number seven. Well, sometimes you get fooled so badly, there's just nothing else you can do but hope and pray that you put the ball in play, hopefully foul, to get another pitch to hit. Chew into the batter's box. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. That's one out. And he's going to hang on to it. No relay. So they will not get the double play. Well, quick Number release three. by the third baseman. They get the lead runner at second, just not able to turn the double play. Here's the pitch to Peralta. Ball. Fastball just misses. 1-0. and oh. We have to remember these middle relievers. They're not used to come. That swung on. Hit on the ground. It's through. The runner's going to come home. Now this one's coming to the inside part of the plate, but he manages to put the bat on the ball and drive it to right field. We call that a muscle hit, Steve. He just muscled that to the opposite field. Now how do you know it's a muscle hit? Muscles? Take a look at these. Oh, it does. And it'll be Valbuena standing in to hit. Well, this may be one of those games where everybody comes to the plate and everybody gets on. Uh, you know, with that last hit, Gary, I mean, things are beyond lopsided right now. We're looking at a blowout. One of the problems here is that the pitching hasn't done the job, so they've got no reason to believe there aren't going to be more runs scored against them. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. And that one to fall in, and the run will score. Steve, not a lot of lefties who necessarily want to go the other way. Great job on that at bat. Oh, exceptional. Went with where the ball was pitched. He fought it off inside and drove it. Now the first pitch. Watches that fastball. That goes by him for a strike. He had an 0 for 4 last year against the White Sox. 0 1 offering from Linebrink. Watches that one for a called strike. Nothing and two. This is why changing speeds is so important for a pitcher. You get the hitter off balance even more effective when it's down in the zone. And it holds at 0 and 2. And he fouls off another one. Well, you're told with an 0-2 count to spread out your stance and to choke up on the bat so you can put the ball in play. Better control of the bat. And that's what he did right there, that 0-2 pitch, just barely getting enough of it to put it in foul territory so he could continue this at bat. Well, he was able to ring up that K, and he needed it, and it got him out of the inning. So they pick up four hits in the inning and two runs across. 
Cleveland's still up big. Great to have you with us here tonight. These fans here at the ball yard dealing with some pretty frigid weather. They're bundled up. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored. Top five. And that'll bring up Paul Canerco. Well, one of the offensive leaders in the game this year, and obviously a guy who's getting the job done for this offense, and somebody they've really come to rely upon. Well, leading the league in home runs. And he starts Canerco out, and that's by him 0-1. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. And Paul Canerco watching that one go by to even the count up. They need more offense right now, Gary. I mean, you know, only leaving two runners on base. You know, we're moving through the middle part. Of Swung on and ripped towards second. The dive and a spectacular play. Oh, Diving oh, play, boy, does that help a pitcher out. I tell you, he's leaving everything on the field. Full body extension. And a runner on, Carlos Quinton will hit. He's number one in runs scored in the league. First pitch to Quinton. Sinker just missed, 1-0. and oh. Just a solid offensive player day in and day out, and a guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. Swung on, liner to right. Two men have been put away. Now Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in batting average. First in batting average with runners in scoring position. And they're also number one in ERA. Their pitching staff getting it done better than everybody. This one's grounded hard up the middle. And that gets through for a base hit. Now and that's going to plate Alex Chicago Rios. Center fielder. Well, a key contributor in that last Alex win. Three Rios. big hits in that game. And he's seeming to find a way again to get it started. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the league. Masterson with the delivery. He swings and drives this one. And that's going to do it. Sizemore is there. So they can't push across any runs. They've been shut out through the first six. Cleveland not letting this lead go. And it's Austin Kearns in the box now. He singled his last trip. And Kearns settles in, ready to go for his pitch. Line towards second. Beckham, He's one away. And now I've got a moment to see how the Indians are doing rank-wise in the American League. Fifth in triple, sixth in stolen bases, and they're in the top ten of team batting average. That depth and length of the lineup paying big dividends for this team as they seem to find ways to get base hits. Marson's in the batter's box. One for four in his career against the White Sox. Scott Linebrink runs that count 0-2. Well, this is what you need to do. You need to put up some zeros right now. Get some outs and get your fielders back in the dugout to swing the bat and try oh. to make up this deficit. Good splitter that time, but it's called a ball one and two. Line brink winds up for the oh. one-two pitch. That's ball just about had him, and it's a two-two count. Change up called strike three. That's the second out. Well, Gary, let's see this pitch again in KK. Here's another look at the changeup. Well, he'll get the batter looking at this one. What a nice pitch, blowing away in the strike zone. And he's going to take a slow walk back, trying to figure out what happened in that at bat. And not a good feeling. Grady Sizemore at the plate. What a year for him. Top five in homers. The pitch. Strike two. Sizemore is going to be much more careful with that cut here. Velocity and location are absolutely critical. That pitch was exactly where he wanted to throw it. Swing and a foul straight back. He delivers. And he fouls another one off. Well, you can tell right there that the batter is in protection mode. Anything close, he's just trying to put it in play. The fact that he fouled it off will keep this at bat going. He was uh, able to ring up that K, and that's going to get him out of the inning. No runs, no hits, no one left on. Cleveland 8, the White Sox number. Latter third of the lineup coming up. Seventh inning. 
Taking account of the ball game, there's Ozzie Guillen. And some good pitching last inning. He now hopes to get the necessary offense going, get him going in the right direction. First pitch, here it comes. There's a swing, line drive, center field. And it gets down. The streak is on. That brings up Mark Tian. And now the hottest hitters of late on base percentage wise over the last 10 games are State Farm leaderboard. Getting on base is a philosophy. It's a mental state. It's a really an approach. And these guys understand that. They understand they have to do whatever they can to get on. They have the toughest at bats of any hitters in the major leagues. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. Well hit towards the middle. And that'll put Tian on first. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. A real good approach at the plate right here. Thinking about going back up the middle. He gets a fastball a little bit inside, but able to just punch it up the middle for a base hit. It's going to be Nix now. One for two in the ballgame. 0 oh and 1. Masterson kicks and delivers. And that'll put him on another hit. Good offensive chance here. Well, that's three consecutive hits he's given up. He can't be out of gas yet. He just has to bear down and get somebody out. They don't want to go to the bullpen this early in the game. And it's hit sharply towards the hole. And that one gets through. Damon knocking in the run. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. Shortstop, number 10, Alexi. Well, two hits the last game, and you can see he was getting a little confidence as that game went on, and he's carrying it into this one with another good start. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. Up with it now. One. On to first, safe. Can't get the back end of that one. Shortstop fired that one over and didn't get him. Well, this is typically a routine play for the shortstop, but the runner beats it out. Good hustle, and the... Shortstop's got to get rid of it more quickly. You may have misjudged the speed of the base runner. And Paul Canerco to bat. Well, here's a swing. A ball hit high in the air. Way, way back there. Gone. That's good for three. Three run homer. A dent in that deficit. Now they trail by just three. Well, you know what? He thought he could command the slider and throw it where he wanted to, but he didn't, and he paid for it. Home run. Well, I tell you, the pitching and defense have got to be nervous right now as the Southsiders look locked in at the plate. They've almost caught them. First pitch to Quinton. Swing, a ball hit high in the air, deep to left field. Gone, that's a dinger. They wish that homer had been chased in a couple more. They'll take it, though, only down two. Comfort behind wins are tough to get, especially against this team, but they're a little bit closer right now. They got the feeling. First pitch on the way. And Masterson gets him swinging for the first strike. You know, you're in the late innings like this. You've got a lead. You're on the mound. You just can't give up. The grounder to Peralta. And Beckham set down. Now State Farm brings you the league leaderboard. Here's who's getting the most extra base hit. And we've got Chris Perez out on the mound. He's coming on in relief for the Indians. Well, it's not surprising they're going to the bullpen now. It's, I just thought maybe they waited a little bit too long. Should have gone and gotten him a little bit earlier. And Alex Rios up. Last season he hit 256 against the Indians. Swing and a drive, deep left center. And that one's put away to retire the side. So they're finally set down, but not before they have a big inning punctuated by two big home runs. The White Sox, they're not going to concede this. They've made a pretty good chunk out of that lead. 
and if you are just coming on board, Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, John Crock, as we bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. As Drupal Cabrera leading it off. Two for three thus far. And Przenski calls for the pitch. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. Damon as he rolls over and puts it away. And a chance to check out the schedule for the White Sox. Final game with Cleveland is Wednesday. They head to yet another venue, the Rays at Tropicana Field. That is a four-game road series. Continuing on, they'll look to add on more victories against the team they've had the upper hand against, the Texas Rangers. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. Rios will field. Didn't have a problem getting over there in time. Well, this ball is hit into the left center field gap. The center fielder has priority over the left fielder. Good job taking charge. He called them off and made the play. And a swinging strike on the first pitch from Linebrink on one. Well, climbing the ladder on him right there. He just throws that fastball right by him up in the zone. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. And in there, second hit for him in the ball game in this fourth plate appearance. Well, sometimes you don't think much of a two-out hit, but if they can continue to capitalize and push another run across, they can extend their slim lead. Liner towards the hole. Well, he's now, having a heck of a day so far. Just third hit of the game in this one. They just can't seem to find an answer for him. Well, this is some kind of battle we're looking at right here, Gary. A couple of RBIs thus far. Well, he's already driven in a couple runs in this one, Gary. you got to believe they're going to pitch him a little bit more carefully this time around. Here's the first pitch. Fastball in there, 0-1. Oh, and he lays off the fastball. Good pitch, one and one. On the way. Splitter just off the black, and it's two and one. Well, you can't expect to have success if you're going to throw that splitter up in the zone. Lined foul towards third. Change up got him and the side is retired. So no runs, two hits, and they strand two. And it'll be the White Sox. And the dugout shot of Manny Active. And now I'm sure glad to be out in front here with that two-run advantage, and he'll want to build on it. It's going to be Przinsky. And the first pitch back up the middle that is in it's going to bring the tying run to the plate. Now well, we have a moment courtesy of State Fire and let's see who has the league league in hits. Now here is Mark Tia runner on first base nobody out. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. Taps this one foul off to the left. And Perez can uh, try and make him chase it now with the count 0 2. Uh, nobody out here in the eighth inning. Strike, strike, strike. Throw strikes. The grounder to Peralta. Gets through. Tying run on. Now batting. Now he tries to sneak one down and in to get the strike three call, but he fights it off. Outstanding job at the plate. And that is so demoralizing for a pitcher. You work so hard to get ahead on the count, and then you give up a base hit. First pitch. This one's hit pretty well to right, but it's going to be out of play. Swung on the fastball. Couldn't get to it. 0-2. Well, that fastball right there, he just blew it by him. Hot shot towards the hole. Oh. 
Now State Farm brings you the RBI leaders for the past 10 games. Oh, these are the run producers right here, the guys that, that ultimately decide whether your team wins or loses. They can pick up RBIs in any situation. Perez with the delivery. A line drive towards short. And Cabrera gloves that one. That'll keep the sacks full. But Gary, get a chance to look at this double play and the replay. And this is an outstanding effort to make the catch, get to the bag, and make the throw. That's a rally killer. And that's going to deny the chance at a big inning here. What a great opportunity for Alexi Ramirez to show what he's made of and to come up big for his teammates. The last year he was solid. 381 against the Indians here in Cleveland. Well, with runners from first and third, it'd be nice to have some speed at first base to maybe get them going to take away the force out. But they don't have that luxury right now. Swing and a ball hit well down the right field line into the corner. Say goodbye, a three-run homer. Anytime you give the team a lead late in the game, it's going to make the manager very happy. You think that's what it's all about, making the manager happy? Well, sometimes making the general manager happy is more important. <laughs> His name's on the check. <laughs> and it'll be Jensen Lewis doing the pitching. He'll be the reliever for the Indians. Well, this is a key situation, so they go to the closer in the eighth inning. You can't go to the well like this too many times during the course of the year. But the manager thinks this game's worth it. And Paul Canerco to bat. Let's take a second to view the top overall power hitters in the league on the State Farm leaderboard. Well, this is a list of hitters that strikes fear in the opposition pitching. They have to because they know with one swing of the bat, they can change the score of the game. And Kerry Wood is the pitcher. He'll be the reliever for the Indians. And it's Carlos Quentin in the box now. Only a couple of tries, one for two last year against Kerry Wood. The pitch. Strike two. Now with no balls, two strikes. Quentin needs to protect that strike zone. That's just a great pitch right there. I mean, that's the hardest pitch for a hitter to try to stay back on. That's why he was out in front of that one. Ended this inning with a nice piece of pitching work as he gets the K. They come from behind to take the lead, a three-run inning. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. And Brantley's in the box. Try it again here, just one for three thus far. Well, they're trailing, but uh, he's driven to two runs, so he's at least done something to help them. Fastball taken high, 1-0. Well, you go to the eighth inning right here, and I've seen the game getting much shorter here. Two innings left in this one, and you've got the one-run lead. But you have to go out there and try to get something going and force them to put the ball in play. Do not give free passes. Do Towards the middle, and Ramirez fields the ball. Over to Canerco. That's one away. And we've got Kearns batting. Nobody on base, one away. Line Brink with the delivery. First pitch, and he misses the fastball. Strike one. One out right here in the eighth inning. Obviously, a critical time of the game right now as we're getting short. Offensively, they need extra bases. They need a double. Get in scoring position. Get a triple here. Get yourself in a position where maybe a productive out scores a run. Swing and a drive. Deep left center. Damon able to glide over. Not much of a problem on that one. Number 30. Marson's in the batter's box. 0 for 3 to this point. And the first pitch. Called strike from line brink. Count now goes to 0-1. One out remaining here in the eighth inning. And uh, obviously offensively time running out. They've got to get something going. Right. Only trailing by a run. Find a way. Get a pitch. If you get one, you can drive. You've got to think about extra bases. And if you hit one, Think double out of the batter's box. Get yourself in scoring position. Steve, that was quite a move he put on that to avoid that last pitch. I know a lot of pitchers like to pitch inside if they feel like the hitter's diving out over the plate, but I don't know what he was thinking right there. And 
And that swung on and hit. Rios. And that's going to be a base hit. Tying run is on. Now this pitch just cuts right over the heart of the plate. Hitter handled it. Perfectly. That's one of those where you've uh, you've given in by making a bad pitch and, and really made it much easier for the hitter. Yeah, he's better than that. Bear down. Here is Grady. He sends this one in the air towards center. And that ends the half inning as Ramirez makes the play. Bell runs at a base. And Beckham's in the box. He's had one hit four times up. Number 15. Well, it's always nice to have a defensive replacement coming off the bench and holding a lead or holding a deficit and giving yourself a chance to win. Now he needs to come up with a big play. Taps this one foul to the right. Wood gets set and delivered. You're out. And that one swung on and missed by Gordon Beck. Let's take another look at that pitch. It's a two-seam fastball in KK. One out. And Alex Rios at the plate. Had a couple of hits. Four trips to the plate. And he starts Rios out. Drilled towards the hole. And he steps on first. That's the second out. It's going to be Brzezinski. Had a base hit his last time up. Ball is blasted. High, deep, center field. Way back there. Goodbye, home run. They'll take that one run homer. They need that. Now the lead is two. Well, he got the pitch, I think, where he wanted it. He wanted it down low. He got it there. The trouble is he made great contact. Well, I credit the hitter right there. He went down on the ball, drove it out of the park, and good piece of hit. White Sox lead expanding here. Gary, they just keep getting Number big hits. 25, Mark Tien. First one to Tien. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul straight back. No balls, one strike. Here's Wood. And that's a strike. Mark Tian's going to have to take very close approach on the next one. Absolutely remarkable comeback, Gary. I mean, how proud do they have to be of this effort today? Great offensive approach, great at bats from this lineup. And now they've got the lead here in the top of the ninth. Well, they pick up a run on the home run and add to their lead. White Sox by two. a look at Ozzy. Ozzy Gant. He's got his club where he wants. Two insurance runs and hoping to close this one out. And J.J. Putz gets ready to throw. Chicago's bringing him in to close now. Well, in the late innings, now it's time for the managers to match wits to see who can... Here's a fly ball to straightaway left. That one's taken care of. Well, defensively, you got one out here in the ninth Number inning, and we want to make a play. Just get an out. You will trade a run for an out here with a two-run lead. And here's the first one. Oh! Slider just misses, 1-0. and oh. Here's the one headed for the middle. Puts. And Laporte is retired. Well, it does, it's, uh, their hope is dwindling right now. Down by two. One out left to play with. And they're going to have to try to come up with some big hits right here to try to win this one, Gary. Sliders in there. No balls and a strike. At the belt, puts, kicks, and throws. Swung on grounder. This might be it. And on to first for out number three, and that's going to do it. Gary, in close games, you have to make the plays at critical junctures. That's what the White Sox did today, and it led them to victory. Now we'll look back at our Pepsi clutch performer. What a game from Alexei Ramirez. Yeah, I mean, this guy came out and made this team look like world beaters today. A couple of hits, and he went big fly. All in all, it ends up to a nice day's work, and they come away on top. And Steve, they're able to put this one away in the record books. That's a good victory.
hey, anytime you can go on the road and beat another major league team, you've got to consider yourself fortunate. So glad you could join us. For Steve Phillips and John Truck, I'm Gary Thorne. We'll see you real soon.